Amen, amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Before you're seated, do me a favor. Turn around, say hello to somebody. Wish them a happy new year. For those of you that are online, welcome today to Living Word Church. I'm going to welcome Pastor Mariano to share in some announcements with you all this morning. You can begin to take your seats. Wow, this is a uh, pretty full and packed. This is beautiful. This is nice. Good morning, Living Word Church, and welcome to our first 11 a.m. service of the year. Yeah, first one. This is awesome. We're so glad you chose to spend your Sunday with us. We're glad you're here. It's cold, it's rainy, but it's beautiful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hey. I'm gonna keep the announcements light because it's the first of the year. You don't need to hear me talk for a long time. So let me run you through a few very quick, basic things. If this is your first time here, we uh, are glad you chose to spend your Sunday with us. In front of you on your seats, there may be a QR code that you can scan with your phone. That'll let you know who we are, what we believe, and how you can get involved in our church. We do believe that there's a place for everyone to belong here. And even in the next few weeks, we're gonna be speaking more about the groups that are gonna be relaunching for this upcoming semester. And we hope that you find a place to belong here at Living Word Church. Parents, there's no kids' church today, which is okay. You need to give the volunteers a nice week to just get their energy back. But next week, kids' church is back on. And do me a favor, when you drop your kids off, uh, thank the teachers for investing in your children. I was listening to something this week and it said that some of the greatest theological things that are given to us are not from our pastor, not from our videos. It's from the Sunday school teacher that told you that Jesus loved you when you were little. And so, hey, your Sunday school teachers, they're making a difference in the life of your kids. If you see them next week, give them a high five, Starbucks gift card, and we'll go from there. Okay, it's not mandatory, but it would be nice. Hey, can I be on next week for Kids Church just so I can receive? Thank you. Uh, hey, finally, youth group was on break for uh, New Year's and Christmas, but New Year, uh, New Year's, youth group starts again this week. So middle school, high school students, lots of energy. Friday night over at the fire escape, that's the place to be. We can't wait to see you then. Finally, uh, giving, real quick. If you give online, you can do it through the website or through the app. If you give in person, you can do it on to one of the two black mailboxes on your way out. But as simply put, uh, last year was the most generous year that we've seen. Uh, and we believe that when we're generous, God takes that and he uses it to do amazing things. And so, although 2021 was a year where we saw God move and we saw generosity and we saw provision, we believe that 2022 is gonna be even more of that. And so, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for believing in the vision of Living Word Church. And we believe that this upcoming year, we're gonna reach more and more people for the kingdom of God, amen? Hey, let's pray together before we jump into the word. Father God, we're so thankful for what you're doing here in this place, God. So thankful that we get to be a part of what's happening, Father. I pray that in 2022, we receive more from you than we ever have, Lord. That we get new revelation, Lord. That we get new convictions, Lord. That you speak into us in a brand new way, Father. We're excited that we get to kick off this year strong. And we can't wait to see uh, what it's going to look like at the end of this year. Lord, we thank you for all that you did last year. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do this year. In your mighty name, all of God's people said... Amen. Hey, would you welcome our pastor this morning as he brings the word? Thanks, bro. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Oh, come on. This is a participatory church. Happy New Year. Awesome. Awesome. Excited to be here. Well, it is January 2nd. Somebody say day two. All right, how many of you have broken at least one of your resolutions already? Anybody want to be brave enough to raise their hand? There we go. The shameful rise. There it is. <laughs> we'll get to that stats in a minute. <laughs> Those stats in a minute. Well, listen, it is an honor to be here with you. Uh, as Parent, Pastor Mariano shared, we're just excited that you're here. Uh, this is an amazing opportunity. Why? Because we get to worship together. Come on. Because we get to literally give glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and we get to talk about the word that he's given us. And I'm excited in this new year, and I'm excited not just because the clock turned 2022, but I'm excited because I know what I don't know. Amen? I don't know what next week will be like. Do you? Come on, we're going to talk it out to start here today. Do you know what next week will be like? Do you know what next month will be like? Do you know what the end of the year will bring you in total other than a new year? Nope. But I can tell you what we do know. 
What we do know is Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. What we do know is that he sent his son, that he would die, live, and die, right? That he would live and die for me and you, that he would conquer sin, right? What we do know is that he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. What we do know is that he doesn't go back on his promises. What we do know is that he is the king of kings and lord of lords. That means he's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. That means he wins always. And by the way, if he's on your side, if he's your best friend, if he's your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to know that you will not journey this year without hope. That you will go through each and every day. I'm not saying it's going to be, you know, picking lilies in the fields and jumping and skipping and being all happy. I'm not saying it's going to be like that. What I'm saying is you will never lack hope because of who is in charge of your life. And as we get to this year, I want us to remember that because when we get into Christmas, right, we talk a lot about a lot of Jesus-themed things and moments of his life. We talk about a lot of the reasons that, right, the reason for the season in Jesus. But I want to remind you that the clock is now January and we're still talking that Jesus is the real reason for today. We celebrated his birth. We will continue to celebrate what has happened in history. But what I'm most excited about is what's going to happen in your history. What I know is that this is a new year, that this is a new day, and this is the day that the Lord has made, so we will what? Come on, and be glad in it. I love being happy, but I prefer to be joyful. I love being happy, but I prefer to be joyful. Why? Because my Bible tells me that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'd much rather know that, yes, you're going to have some happy and you're going to have some sad and you're going to have some moments that are just kind of up and down. But if you have hope and you have joy, right, then I know that the loving peace of Jesus Christ will lead you through any storm you face this year. He'll celebrate on the mountaintops and he'll bring you right through the valleys because that is his promise this day, the next day, and any calendar year that might turn. Amen. I want to talk to you about what it means to be resolute I'm not necessarily going to go into resolutions or share any of mine or really walk through yours because what I understand is that if we don't have a foundation, then every house crumbles. You see, what I'm concerned about in this season is the understanding of the voice of God. And let me be clear. What I mean by is this. When we go and we take an educational class for something at work or school, we do so to be educated in order to have wisdom to then go do what we need to. Amen? Are you with me? We come to church, and if we're truly believing that's what's being spoken from here, what we're diving in our Bible studies, our groups, and other moments, if we're believing that the word is alive, then that too is these educational wisdom moments that should be deposits in your life throughout the year that then take you equally where God would have you throughout each day and week. Are you with me still? The challenge is many of us, we go through seasons, and I do want to provide a little accountability for us. Because as a church, we've spent the last four to six months talking about an anchor that is unmovable in Jesus Christ. We've talked about what it means to pray, to fast, to worship, what it means to rest, what it means to walk a spiritually disciplined life. Why did we do that? Because God put that on our heart back in June, and so we wrote the whole thing for the fall. We talked about it for four months, not just because it's church material, because we thought that the word of God was necessary for such a time as this that we would not be tossed back and forth in the waves, but that we would be steadied. That we would know that because our anchor is down and firm and rooted, that no matter what comes our way, we will not be shaken from the things of God. That the things of God are going to be yes and amen. We might get a little seasick on top. Come on now. But God's promises will prevail. And what I love about the word resolute, right, is that it means admirably purposeful. And so I want to ask you an accountability today. When you start to make resolutions, when you start to make some goals, when you start to think about where you want to be a year from now, a day from now, a month from now, I ask you, are you going to be resolute with your resolutions? Come on. Are you going to be admirably purposeful in the things you believe God has purposed in your heart that you would do each day, week, month, and year? Will you be diligent to know that it's not about how other people perceive you, it's not about comparison, right, but it is about accountability. Come on now. You see, some of you don't let people in and you don't realize that God has put people around you because he has not called us to be alone. 
God has allowed people in your life and wants to bring people in your life, but you have to go ahead and give permission to that because God loves you so much, but he also wants you to be in partnership with his will. But a lot of us, if we're being honest, we don't want more people in our life because people stink sometimes. <laughs> Come on, right? It's difficult, right? How many best friends can I really have? How many, how many people can really be that close? Uh, how many more people can I have over for dinner? How many more people can do this? And you sit back and you go, wait a minute. I realize that I can be a lighthouse. I realize that I can be who Christ wants me to be to all people. But I have to learn how to lead myself as I then try to go lead others. Come on. And the reason I share that with you this morning is because I believe that self-leadership is the hardest leadership. I believe that many of us have a hard time with this, yours truly, because we understand that Scripture explains to us in the book of Galatians, right, that our spirit, right, that our flesh is set up against our spirit. We've been teaching this. You're tracking with me. So because of that opposition, because of that war, right, we have to be, right, admirably purposeful. We have to be so resolute that it's not that we want to impress somebody with our Christian walk. It's that we have a desire that more of God would be seen through our life today than it was yesterday. I want to find another place with God because I know my Bible tells me if I do, then what's happening in my life can also give permission to what's happening in your life. Because it's not me, it's him. And this is the greatest thing about relationship. And this is why some people are just taking life out of you instead of you putting life into them. Because God is teaching us in this season, right, how to appropriate relationships, how to understand the things of God and what he's purposed for us and has for us. But as we set some goals, some resolutions, as we desire to be in a next level, somebody say next level, position with God, as we desire these things, we have to understand that just being next level isn't a phrase. Come on. I want to go to the next level. Well, do you understand the next level is an actual place? The next level is tangible. Because if it's not tang tangible, then it's just a fantasy. Come on. Oh, I just want to be this, and I want to do that, and I'd love to go there. I'd love to, to look like this, and sound like this, and think like that. Come on, it sounds like a Disney movie, right? I just want to be. It's all fun. Why? Because it's fun to talk about. But in real life, in reality, in order to understand what God has, in order to see through his plans, in order to go to the next level, we have to recognize right, that the next level is a tangible place that we must desire to be. And so I ask you, what is that? In the physical, in the emotional, in the spiritual, what is that for you? As you continue to go and grow this year, I ask you to at least be honest with yourself. Come on now. It's going to help you grow. I don't know about you, but I've blamed uh, many, many different people or many things along the way because I didn't succeed. Anybody with me? Come on. Right? You tried this 30-day thing, and they said, if you do it this way, you'll lose this. Right? How many of you tried that? Right? I'll raise my hand for you. That's okay. First service was really bad about this one. But the truth of it is, is we're sitting there and the poor lady behind the desk or the poor guy behind the desk, you're 30 days in, you paid this money, you did this thing, and she's looking at you like, I, did, I don't look like that. You come to church, I don't sound like that. I'm not closer to Jesus, that preacher. And we sit back and we look at this, right? And you go, and you're sitting here and you're blaming everybody else and the little lady behind the desk or the little guy behind the desk is saying, well, sir, ma'am, did you try anything we offered? Well, yeah, I did three of the 10 steps. The idea was to try to do 10 of 10, um, but we even set the mark. Maybe if you just did 7 of 10, you would have probably seen results. Come on now. But we're so quick in our resolutions that we're not resolute. We're not admirably purposeful in our actions and our steps. And because we don't know how to lead self, we start to blame others for the progress we don't see in our own life. But we want to be here. And we sit back and we're like, wait a minute. If God made me in his image, then that means that what he is and who he is, that means I may not be able to do things like you or be as skilled in a specific area like you, but I know I can do all things according to what he would have me do. Come on. And see, that's where the enemy in comparison just has to end. 
That's when it's admirable to say, wow, man, I wish I prayed like they did. It's admirable when somebody posts up that they actually read the Bible in a year. Come on now, somebody, right? How many times do we try, right? How many, how, how many times do we try, right? Come on now, there we go. Thank you for the honesty, right? How many times? It's like the easy Christian thing. You got so many apps now, right? You're going to try it, right? Just, and it's not to be convicted. It's just to be honest. And we need to have these markers because if we want to be better, we have to have these understood markers to say, well, where did I fail? Did I really want to read the word just to tell somebody I read it in a year? Or did I read the word because I recognize that if I understand God's word, I will understand his heart and his promises for my life? That I will understand my purpose. That I will truly get, as even I traverse the Old Testament sometimes, why it seems so dark and challenging, but then it becomes so great and victorious. You see, you can't just leave out a portion of history and hope to understand the big picture. God the Father is so good that what you resolve, right, this year, it doesn't mean just because you write it down it's going to happen. And so my challenge to you in this portion is that you would begin to take steps, and I'm going to just offer a couple that I think will help, but as you take steps, it has to start with this desire, right, in the evidence of what you really want to see. And so if you're going to, excuse me, if you're going to read the whole Bible, I'm telling you, I'm being straight with you, right? You will fail if your purpose is just to read the Bible. You're just only so human. 365 days, about 10, 10 to 15 minutes a day, and you'll read the Bible this year. That's about what it comes out to. But that's every day. And some of you are like, oh, I got 10 to 15 minutes a day. Call me after a week. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I got to catch up. It's like two and a half hours. I'm like, that's the whole week, right? <laughs> but, your, but your perspective changes, right? When you look at it from this lens of hunger, when you look at it from this lens of knowledge, I desire to be more like him. I desire to know him to know the things of God. I, de I desire to know how, how Paul was able to write this book while he was in prison. And, and I don't get it. Like, why is he so happy? He's in jail, and he's telling other people who are miserable, who are not in jail, why are you not happy? Come on now. We, we could use a couple Pauls today. But that's what our job is. God asked us to be as those who believe and know and love him. I really believe that when you understand that the next level requires changes that you're not, maybe not ready to make, right, in this season, you're going to start shifting from this comfortable mindset to this very challenged mindset. You see, some of you are going to have to be made uncomfortable to begin to see real change happen in your life. Hebrews 12 says it this way, Therefore, since we, since we also have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, Let's rid ourselves of every obstacle and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let's run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking only at Jesus, the originator and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Read this verse 3 with me. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Somebody say consider. The very first instruction is to constantly consider the one who has already overcome. In order to make it where you believe that God would have you to be this year, this verse says it so clearly. Consider him who has endured. He already did it. You might have a friend who's conquered something you're trying to conquer, and that's powerful, and you will need that testimony and want that testimony. But what this says is first go to him who has already conquered everything. Because when you do, you will experience more than you could have imagined, more than you could perceive in the moment. I want to give you three crucial ingredients to seeing sustainable change this year. Number one is the word obedience. Inside of obedience, it's very simple for some of us. How many of you are rule followers? Anybody like just, I need, I like, I like the rules? Ray, wave your hand a little bit. We're going to participate. I just need some action here. Here we go. Great. Let the people online see you and stuff, right? Rules for some people 
are great guidelines, right? How many of you have less anxiety when there's rules? This is a good survey, okay? How many of you have more anxiety when there's rules? Okay, cool. Like a 60 40 ish, depending on participation. <laughs> but what I love about this, right, when you look at it, is obedience is following directions. The Bible is full of these directions. We have the Ten Commandments. We have the promises of God. We have, hey, you know, Lord, Jesus, how do we do these moments, right? So we have all these scriptural moments that kind of give us instruction on how to be, right, a child of God, on how to walk this out, on how to even read the Bible, how to interpret the Bible, right? All these different things. Obedience helps us, right? But what I also want you to understand inside of this, right, is that it's not only Christians who benefit from biblically, not from Bible-based knowledge, Track with me here. How many of you enjoy being generous? Everybody generous, right? Generous, generous, generous. That's great. Generosity, if you talk to somebody who works in the business world, right, and they just don't, maybe there's not a Christian, they don't know Jesus, they'll say to you simply, oh, I, I, listen, the key to this success is generosity. Why? Because generosity is helping people. Generosity is a direct reflection of the heart of God. Even though they don't know that, they still got that from the Bible. Amen? And so what I want to teach you this morning is there is a difference between obedience and submission. Somebody follow me today. You don't need to be a Christian to be obedient to the rules that God has in the Bible. There are people that walk around this world who do things that the Bible say, like being generous, and they do see the benefits of being generous of their time, of their finances. Are you tracking with me here? Come on. The seed always produces the fruit. Come on, somebody. Me and you are children of God. And so there is a difference in this, but I, I want you to find it with me today. The difference between obedience and submission is that you have submitted to the authority of God and you are obedient to the precepts of the Father. So you not only understand that being generous, right? You not only understand that being self-controlled, right? That being loving, that being kind, right? You understand that these actions will produce a result, but the difference in your life is that you've submitted to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so I want you to hear me say this. If you think you're just following rules, you're right. You're going to see some results. Come on now. But in your life, don't be fooled only by the results to think that you're drawing closer to God because you're doing godly things. Man, come on now, somebody. That hits different. We have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be able to say and to speak and to discern the difference as far as just being obedient and being submissive. And you see, the difference is this. When you're submissive and God says to give him something that you don't want to, you still do so. The other people who don't follow God, anybody who doesn't know God wouldn't understand that precept or that moment. And I want to encourage you this year, one of the keys, one of the main crucial ingredients inside of understanding and fulfilling God's will for your life is learning how to be submissive to his authority. And as you do so, you are not only going to see the fruits of your labor, you're not only going to see what the Bible promises, but you're going to draw closer to the king. You're going to be more intimate with him. You're going to be able to share him. Your lighthouse is going to be brighter than you could imagine. Not that you would be seen, but that he would be seen in Jesus' name. The last thing inside of this portion that I wanted to share, I actually wrestled with, and it's the word selflessness. And the reason why I wrestled with this word is because it's kind of a two-part sermon for me. One, we're very good at taking other care of other people more than taking care of ourselves. So I struggled with putting this point in here because in my head I'm like, well, if I say selflessness is a crucial ingredient, right, to seeing God's will in your life this year, then it really was tough for me because I, I, I want you to understand that you still have a responsibility to take care of yourself even though you're taking care of others. 
Self-leadership is the greatest leadership. You have to learn to lead, and you have to learn to let God lead through submissive leadership. So when I wrote this down, right, I also wrestled with it because then on the flip side, as God just convicted me as I wrote and wrote and wrote and deleted and wrote and wrote and deleted, <laughs> because I wrestled with it, I'm being honest with you, the part that I couldn't shake that was biblical was this, right? Just this idea of allowing, right, I'll just say it as I wrote it, allowing God to show you how serving the needs of others completes his plan for this season. What I don't want to miss out on, what I don't want you to miss out on, is the fact that God didn't call you to live in a little bubble by yourself and just run your own life and be your own person and just kind of live and then one day go be with him. I want you to understand that you were made with purpose, that yes, you yourself would know God, love God, live with God, walk with God, that you would be healthy mentally, physically, emotionally, that you would have that, but that then you would kind of peek outside and you'd open that door and you'd realize how amazing it is that God would use you and the impact of how he's shaped your story would now go shape the story of other people. And that you wouldn't be ashamed of your testimony and you, you wouldn't be ashamed to, to just say, man, I, I just, I love my Jesus and I, I, I don't want you to be where you are today. I know you can be, be, you can be elsewhere, you can be moved here. How? By submitting to the authority of heaven. And I love that because inside of the, the idea of being selfless, right, for some of you, right, it's become a place, and, and, and somewhat of the, the last two years have done this to some of us, right? We have to, Nick, I have to take care of my home. Nick, I have to do this. And it's like, yes, yes, I promise you, that's the whole other half of this sermon that I'm just not going to get into today. Yes, your first ministry, your first responsibility is right here. Amen? But after that, if we want to go to the next level, our anchor has to be strong enough that we're able to care for our first ministry and now go out into all the world and share the good news of Jesus Christ. It's a mandate from heaven. What I've learned inside of this and inside of those three, three things is that it truly depends on how you're going to think, how you're going to process, what you're going to allow in and what's going to come out. And the verses that I want to give you today, and I want you even to write them down because I think there's just some purpose inside of rereading them throughout this week. But Philippians 4, 8 says it for me very clearly. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, commendable, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Inside of the Bible, the word heart and mind are very synonymous throughout Scripture. And so as you kind of think of this, think through the word heart and think through the word mind because they're very synonymous as you read many of these passages. Whatever is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You see, it matters what you dwell on. Because what you're dwelling on will continuously come out of you. It's why after a long day of work or a challenging day with a coworker or a family member or something, right? It's, it's one of the first things when you get back home, maybe to your family or maybe the first person you talk to on the car ride home, right? It's usually like a free counseling session, amen, right? <laughs> Some of you are just yelling at the radio. That's okay too, right? It's healthy. Just get it out. <laughs> but inside of our mind, which is such a precious, fragile place, amen? We have to understand what we're feeding it. We have to understand that if we don't protect our mind, our thinking will quickly become deteriorated and we will start thinking things opposite of what God has promised to us. What's crazy is that that little bit right inside of us, that little bit of flesh we allow starts to eat at joy and then it starts to eat at faith. And then it starts to eat at hope. And listen, I promise you, just like it's hard to attain things, right, for those of you that are rooted in Christ, it's also hard for that to be eaten away. But the truth is, the scary thing is, right, whether we've been in church a really long time or we're new at, at, at this relationship with Jesus, the truth is anything can happen over time. And if our eyes are not open to see what's happening, if we don't realize, right, how much the negativity, how much the problems, right, how much of what we've just kind of shoved down, right, is just eating at us inside, then we will eventually reap the result of that. Amen? Psalm 51.10. This is a great, a great way to come out of these moments. Psalm 51.10. Create in me a clean heart, God, 
and renew a steadfast spirit within me. The reason I put this in here for you today is because it is a two-step act of obedience, submission, and worship. And as you read this, it's very simple. Okay, Pastor Nick, well, how do I start over? How do I, how do I kind of create this clean slate? I've got so many things in my mind. I've got bitterness. I've got unforgiveness. I've got the, all these things that I'm dealing with. Where do I start? Well, Psalm 51.10 says, create in me a clean heart, God. That means that if you will humble yourself and you will submit to him and say, God, come inside of me, search in me and find in me that which doesn't belong, right? You better get ready because he's going to show it to you. And it's going to be your choice to deal with it or reshove it back down again. And guess what happens the next time? You're going to go to him and you're going to say the same prayer. Lord, create in me a clean and pure heart. Okay, why? Why? Well, here, stay here this time because last time you left, right? <laughs> stay here, right? Why? Because who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Well, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. Oh, oh. So I can, I can go there? I can go there if I... If, if, Okay, Lord, let's do this again. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Create this in me. You see, the resolutes start to change, right? This admirably purposeful event where you're now determined. You're saying, wait a minute, I can't climb that hill unless? And he's going, yeah. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. You find God waiting there for you. Psalm 1914, worship team, you can join me this morning. This is, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Let's just get real for a second on this side. Some of us are very selfish in our nature to the point where our stubbornness causes us to react outwardly in a way that really doesn't represent how we feel. Say that again. Because of what has taken root in our lives, unforgiveness, sadness, right? Things that, things that, 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 not just sadness, but unforgiveness, right? Bitterness, things that would be the opposite of the fruit of the Spirit, right? Hate, disunity, all these things, right? Because of those things that have been allowed to stay, you may genuinely not want the results that are coming out of you, but you have to understand what has been placed inside of you. And so as we look at this, it says, Lord, in the purpose of this worship, right, may the words of my, of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. You and I have to remember that as we say yes to God and submit to him, right, we have to have some of these conversations like God is actually in the room. Some of you would stop your conversations if you really knew God was in the room with you. Some of you, well, they're not here. I could talk about them like this. Well, well, God's there. Is it pleasing to him? Is it edifying to him that you're doing this? You see, we forget that although someone may not know God, right, that they are a child of God. That God, they're made, right? And that God desires that one day all of his children would worship him in spirit and truth. And you don't know someone's story. You don't know what's going on. And so inside of this, right, what I want to get through to us in this portion today is that it does matter what we think and what we say. It does matter, even though people aren't around and we act a certain way. It does matter that we continuously approach the same situation and there's poor result after poor result after poor result and we use the same excuse, well, I'm just tired. I'm just bitter. Well, Nick, you know how I am with those people. It's like, yes, I do. And I'm guilty of this too, so please understand that I'm preaching this to myself today. Come on. But what I'm saying is that if we get real and we want to level up, if we want to go to the next level and be emotionally healthy and physically healthy and spiritually healthy, if we want to take our health, our, uh, if we want to take our personal relationship with God, then we got to start getting real with how to do it. It has to become a tangible place. I want to treat people better. I want to pray for more people. I want to thank, I, I want God to do what he wants today through my life. And I'm okay if it's not comfortable for me, but I want him to do what he wants. Lord may, the, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Proverbs 4, 23. 
Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Watch over your heart in all diligence, with all diligence, and from it flow the springs of life. I'll say it to you this way as we close. Sustainable growth happens intentionally. Everyone wants to go to the next level, but not many people are willing to sacrifice what they need to to get there. And we have to be real because writing things down is just one thing, but being admirably, come on, purposeful, being resolute is a completely different place. Now listen, I'm not going to give you permission just to keep failing, but I understand you're not perfect. The reason I came up here and said, what's your mountain, is because I know this, right? A lot of times in counseling, in the counseling setting, right, we kind of use this term, right, like, you know, break the monster into pieces. Because when people come in, they often have this big monster called life. And they see this big monster, and they, 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 they're just like, well, how do I defeat that? How do I? And it's like, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's just deal with the arm. Let's just deal with this. Let's just deal with this part. Let's deal with it. And before you know it, over time, you've defeated the monster. Come on. What's amazing is that you serve a God who can defeat the whole thing. But sometimes people need to be taken on a journey to realize that just because they conquered one part, now they can go conquer the rest. And the reason that God, just like, uh, you know, uh, is not like some of us today, right, and just does it all for us, come on now. The reason he doesn't always do that is he wants to create that steadfast. He wants to create that, that endurance inside of us. But he never promises, he, never, he promises to never leave us with it. God doesn't just want you to be in this place and, and suffer just to suffer. That's not the kind of God he is. He's a good dad. But he does love you so much that he wants you to grow. That sometimes you're going to be cut back to grow further. Come on now. It's biblical. But it's up to you. Do you want real results? Are you going to really be resolute in what you have? Why? Because Psalm 32, and I'll close it to say it this way. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will advise you with my eye upon you. Come on, that's powerful. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will advise you with my eye upon you. Do you understand that when you ask, you will receive the will of God? Not just what you want, but when you ask, you will receive the will of God according to his riches and glory so that you could be all that he wants you to be today. That you would be willing to see this world changed for Christ because of the change that happens in you. You receive that today, church. Amen. Would you stand with me? We're going to close in worship today. And I invite you, just like we do every week, to make this home and stay as long as you'd like. And the altars will be open and there'll be people here to pray for you. But I will say this. I would encourage you even most. We'll be here to pray with you all year through any challenge and anything you have. But I'll say this. Begin to take your personal relationship with Jesus to another level. When you begin to open your mouth and ask him to come into a new place with you, even an old place with you, let him restore. Let him heal this day. I want to say it as plainly and clearly as this. If you're with us today, if you're online today, and you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to just tell you, you're missing out on the greatest best friend in the world. He loves you. He died for you. And the Bible tells us simply, right, with the attitude of our heart, the confession of our mouth, and the belief in our heart that he is Jesus, right, that you can know him this day, this day, that he could be your best friend the way you hear me talking about him today, and I pray even others as you go today, that you can understand that you have a community of believers around you that really believe that you can be all that God would intend you to be today. And so if that's you here or online or anyone who may see this in the future, I encourage you today to just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, to truly posture yourself and ask God to come in and if you're here today, I ask you, don't even leave the room today. Before you go, come see me. Let me give you a hug. Let me pray for you. Let me encourage you because we want to let you know that you are not alone in this next step. We want you to know that we're for real about your relationship with God and that we want you to know him like never before. Amen? For those of you that have been journeying and you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you today 
to be admirably purposeful, to be resolute, to have reverence if you're going to write something down, but at the same time not be afraid to be bold and step out in faith. There are great things ahead of you. The sun is going to rise tomorrow. And the reason I say that is because I know that God's promises are yes and amen. And what I mean by that today for you is that as you journey with him, when things don't look like they should, when you don't understand, always go back to scripture to say that God promised you and me. He said, I will instruct you, Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will advise you with my eye upon you. That means, yes, each and every one of us can have a confidence that he's not ignoring us, that he knows your story, your situation, and your need this very day. So when you leave here, please don't leave here as a person who is aimless and goalless. Please don't leave here as a person who wonders what might happen in a negative way, in, in fear. But walk reverently before God and say, Lord, you promised me that your eye is on me. You promised me you would instruct me on which way to go. And so I'm going to stand right here until you tell me to go. And so here I go, God. Let's do this from day one. And that is my encouragement to you as the believer today. I pray that you'd worship him like you never have before. I pray that you'd see him like you've never had before. And lastly, I pray that you'd hear him like never before. In Jesus' name, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for today. We thank you for the word of God. I thank you, Father, this day. Lord, for anybody here who doesn't have a relationship, God, I thank you that this could be, Lord, their, their day of, uh, of just coming to know you in a special, special way, God. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you that because of that freedom, we are free. We thank you, Father, for what you've done. Lord, I pray this year that you would give us faith, boldness, that we would be brave, God. That we would know that you've got our back and that you've got your eyes upon us and that you will instruct us. Lord, may we not move in haste, but may the patience of the Father be resting upon us. Would you lead us by the Holy Spirit? May it be our guide, our, our, our leader. May your voice be so clear in this season, Father. May your presence be so tangible. We ask these things and we love you. We thank you today that we get to meet together and celebrate you. In Jesus' mighty name, all God's people said, amen. Living Word, have a blessed Sunday. Feel free to remain and, and uh, the altars are open. God bless everybody.